So I'm uh, pleased to provide uh, an update on the efforts of our, of our working group. Uh, we've been very busy uh, over the last six months developing a document which is the subject of this presentation. So it's the uh, Canadian Jurisdictional Guidelines for the Safe Testing and Deployment of Highly Automated Vehicles. And uh, the next speaker, uh, Eric Thompson, has also been a, a valued uh, member and a strong contributor of, of the uh, efforts of our working group. So uh, a quick overview of the presentation. I'll touch on the uh, history of our working group, uh, the uh, elements of the report, some examples of the guideline recommendations that we've developed, uh, next steps, and a conclusion. So uh, our work got uh, underway in 2014, and uh, we held a uh, workshop in 2015 involving government and industry and created some, some practical tools for, for jurisdictions, including a jurisdictional testing, a jurisdictional checklist uh, for testing and deployment. And we also developed some communication products, uh, key messaging and web content, uh, to ensure consistency in terms of how the jur various jurisdictions uh, speak to the issue surrounding testing and deployment. And it was helpful in the early days when we were getting media inquiries. We also produced a white paper uh, highlighting key considerations, benefits and challenges as well as what other uh, leading countries were working on. But the, uh, the main deliverable for our CCMTA Automated Vehicle Working Group was the, the development of these guidelines for motor vehicle administrators. And we also were in including uh, recommendations for law enforcement as it relates to administration. But our work was delayed because we were waiting for some work that was being done by the American Association of Motor Vehicle Administrators Working Group but which Brenda mentioned I was also a member of, because we wanted to avoid uh, duplication of effort instead of um, uh, going through all the same policy considerations, we were gonna build off the work that the, uh, the ANVIL working group did. And uh, we really got going on our work uh, in January of this year, and uh, we took the learnings from the ANVIL working group. We were able to get access to the document before it was published, which it was uh, recently published in, in May on their website, but we had it uh, ahead of time so we could get started on our work because we were given, uh, in January, a June deadline of, of completing the work. So this slide is really just to point out that from a regulator's perspective, uh, automated vehicles is a shared responsibility. Federal, provincial, territorial, and municipal levels of government each have a responsibility regarding their introduction. So currently, two sets of guideline documents have been developed uh, for the uh, Council of Deputy Ministers meeting in July of this year. Uh, and this is in response to both CCMTA's work plan and the uh, Senate Committee recommendations on automated and connected vehicles. So the two guideline documents are the, the one that uh, is mainly the subject of this presentation, Canadian Jurisdictional Guidelines. Uh, but then a, another document testing highly automated vehicles in Canada, guidelines for trial organizations, uh, was also being developed over the same time frame. And Transport Canada was, was leading uh, that work in collaboration with CCMTA. An important consideration for the development of the two documents was to make sure that they are closely aligned in their approach and definitions and needing a consistency and also uh, that uh, they be complementary to each other. So this uh, slide just basically describes the audience and scope of each document. So the jurisdictional guidelines, the audience is motor vehicle administrators as well as law enforcement uh, with respect to the administration and regulation and control of automated vehicles. The scope is really a, a set of guidelines as it relates to mainly vehicle registration, driver licensing, uh, governance and administration within a, within a particular jurisdiction and law enforcement. And the, uh, the other document, uh, the guidelines for trial organizations, is really targeted at organizations that might be interested in conducting trials of these vehicles on roads in Canada. And this scope is uh, 
provides clarity around the roles and responsibilities of uh, each level of government and uh, how, uh, at a high level, how a testing ent entity would go about conducting tests uh, in a particular jurisdiction. So in terms of background, an important uh, goal of the guidelines document is to establish some clear, common and consistent language for the discussion of automated driving systems in Canada. So the guidelines start with a preface that provides internationally accepted vehicle classifications and definitions and terms commonly used to identify and differentiate various automated driving system capabilities on the market or being tested. We've also supplemented these definitions with some terms that help explain in more detail how the systems will be described in the Canadian context, uh, such as legislation, regulations and, and guidelines. In terms of the uh, guiding principles, um, these were established to really influence the development of our recommendations. And the first two were kind of the key ones. We, want, we didn't want to have a, a patchwork, but we want to create consistency across jurisdictions. We want to encourage and enable the earliest safe introduction of the technology, uh, confirm and clarify roles and responsibilities of the levels of government, and demonstrate that uh, we are aware and we have an understanding as jurisdictions of the technology we want to help uh, promote uh, public acceptance and confidence and adoption as they are deployed. Also, as I mentioned, <clears throat> creating common language and terms and working towards uh, interoperability, which is really about uh, consistency with other uh, jurisdictions. So this slide uh, just describes the various uh, federal, uh, provincial, territorial, and municipal roles. So Transport Canada, for example, they're responsible for setting and enforcing uh, compliance with safety standards uh, for manufactured and imported vehicles. Uh, ICED, or Innovation, Science, and Economic Development Canada, has a responsibility to set and enforce compliance with technical standards and licensing requirements related to wireless technologies uh, integrated in, in these vehicles. Uh, provincially, territorially, we have driver licensing, vehicle registration licensing, law enforcement, uh, safety inspections, insurance and liability. And municipalities are responsible for enacting and enforcing bylaws uh, for local roadways, amongst other items. In terms of how the report will be used, the jurisdictional guidelines provide a series of considerations and recommendations that Canadian jurisdictions and manufacturers and other entities in their planning and rollout of ADS uh, vehicles. Focuses on government, governance and overall it delves into the various disciplines of vehicle registration license, and driver licensing, law enforcement, and really provides a, a point in time set of uh, voluntary recommendations. And we're seeing um, deployment occurring at the same time. Some uh, level three vehicles are now available. You might have seen uh, commercials for the Cadillac uh, C -tex, C, uh, CT6 with their supercruise uh, technology. So getting into uh, some of the details, uh, some examples uh, for governance includes establishing an automated uh, driving system committee to address ADS testing and deployment. And the committee should include members from a broad range of government and private sector stakeholders uh, having interest or responsibilities uh, related to ADS vehicles. We also suggest ad identifying a lead agency to manage the committee and its work. And it should develop strategies for addressing testing and deployment of ADS vehicles in their jurisdiction, uh, balancing road safety with enabling technological innovation. An example of a recommendation uh, for manufacturers and other entities uh, we believe that uh, they should be interacting cooperatively and responding to jurisdictional ADS uh, committee questions and requests. So chapter four of the document focuses on testing and it uh, deals with vehicle credentialing considerations. And in that section of the report, it talks about the application and permit for manufacturers or other entities uh, to test vehicles on public roadways. Uh, vehicle permitting and registration, uh, license plates, financial responsibility, and compliance of ADS trial vehicles with the Motor Vehicle Safety Act. 
Under driver licensing, there are considerations for uh, driver and passenger roles being defined, and also driver license requirements for testing by manufacturers and other entities. Some of the recommendations including developing an internal process that includes an application for manufacturers to test on public roads within the jurisdiction, and also provides for provisions for suspension or revocation of any permit should the permit holders violate permit conditions. It also holds test users responsible for violations of traffic laws subject to existing legal processes and requires manufacturers and other entities testing vehicles to apply for and be issued vehicle specific permits uh, prior to testing on roadways. For manufacturers, uh, manufacturers and other entities should interact uh, cooperatively and respond to uh, requests. They should also notify the jurisdiction of any changes in the ADS level of a vehicle. Um, one of the uh, key areas just uh, mentioning for uh, deployment, um, we want to ensure that uh, we, we, g we gain good data from the vehicles. So we were suggesting that um, jurisdictions include a specific vehicle status on the vehicle, indicating that it's a, an automated driving system capability vehicle, and also flag its uh, level of, of operation. And if the vehicle has received an aftermarket um, upgrade to automated vehicle technology, we feel that it should be indicated with a, an a, uh, an a status or an altered vehicle status. Running out of time here, but I just want to mention that uh, data metrics and performance of ADS vehicles will be really important uh, to track uh, for a number of reasons. So we have the uh, ability to be a source of data for actuaries, and the Casual Actuarial Society just released a report last month indicating uh, a pathway to safety, the, safe, the case for collaboration. And it just pulled out a couple of uh, common themes and quotes. So it's imperative for the various parties and stakeholders, manufacturers, technologists, policymakers, attorneys, risk managers, insurers, to cooperate during the de uh, development and rollout of automated vehicle technology and address collaboratively issues as defining and collecting appropriate data uh, considering the potential liability systems. Clean and consistent data are essential for proper analytical evaluation, which is necessary in order to quantify the risks associated with autonomous uh, automated vehicles. And one of the most important statements, currently it's very difficult and so sometimes impossible for insurers to distinguish between vehicles with and without advanced technology. And unless this changes, uh, performance will take even longer to be reflected in premium discounts, which can result in delaying the introduction uh, of the technology and the delaying the benefits that we'll see. So they agree also that we need to work together to achieve the earliest safe introduction and adoption of the technology as possible. So there are other uh, recommendations as it relates to, uh, to law enforcement and uh, how they uh, would want to uh, manage the vehicles. We've got recommendations for first responders in terms of their training, uh, recommendations for the manufacturers in terms of uh, what information they should make available so that these vehicles can be identified. We've also got recommendations relating to uh, the, the test users in terms of uh, the background check that should occur, driver history, criminal checking, uh, but that should be related to, uh, to driving vehicles. And we also uh, have recommendations relating to manufacturers and, uh, and other entities that these ADS vehicles should leave an electronic fingerprint that can allow the tracing of input data to whoever initiated them. And that's really about uh, remote uh, users, so if the vehicle's unoccupied in terms of who directed it to do what and when. 
So just some key points. Uh, jurisdictions should consider the recommendations within their legislative process, which could result in changes to laws, regulations, and policies. Uh, manufacturers are encouraged to consider the recommendations when testing or, or deploying vehicles and leverage an optimal relationship with government par partners to achieve uh, the most safe and robust uh, testing and deployment conditions. Uh, so we'll continue to work with some key industry stakeholders. Uh, we've got a deadline of uh, this Friday for manufacturers to provide, provide input into the document. And then once we've received that, we'll finalize it, present it to our CCMTA board by the end of the month, and it will be submitted to the Council of Deputies uh, for their July meeting. Uh, we'll continue to work with other organizations to prepare uh, for the testing and deployment of these vehicles. And the report is intended to be a living document which will be updated uh, periodically as the testing advances. And I think we're going to leave it for questions until after Eric's had a chance to present.